Again, thank you, Brother Al. Appreciate that. And uh, if we're going to meet outdoors, we hope you will play again for us next next week. All right. Let me find my notes here, guys. I, I had it going and then I lost it. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, we talked about judgment last week. Do you remember that? Uh, did we do that? No, we did it just online, right, last week? I'm trying to think. It was the week before we met in person in the church. So, But last week we, we met online, and uh, I spoke a little bit about judgment. And uh, we're going to continue that this week because I realized we didn't really g go as deep as I wanted to about judging. We, we talked about how we're not to judge people outside of the church. We judge people in the church, and we're, we're going to go into some of that. But I have a story for you about judgment. This is, this is kind of cute. Two dogs and a cat die, and they all appeared in front of the seat of judgment. St. Peter was there, and so was God in his throne, right? And uh, God says to St. Peter, well, find out why we should let them into heaven. And St. Peter looks at the golden retriever and says, why should we let you into heaven? And the golden retriever says, well, there was a crazed killer loose in our neighborhood, and I attacked the killer and saved my family that adopted me. And he looks up at God, and God says, yeah, let him in. So the golden retriever comes in. Of course, all golden retrievers get to go to heaven, right? Anyway, uh, and a little chihuahua was there, right? A little kind of a rat dog, right? Can't really attack people and hurt them, right? And, uh, and, and the chihuahua says, can I come in? And St. Peter says, let me check with God. He says, what do you think, God? He says, well, ask him. So St. Peter looks at the chihuahua and says, why should we let you? And he goes, well, I'm not as big and strong as the golden retriever, but I gave good comfort to a lady in her older years before she passed away. And I think that deserves heaven. And St. Peter says, what do you think, God? God says, sure. So the chihuahua comes in. The cat's left, right? <laughs> St. Peter looks at the cat and says, now why should we let you into heaven? The cat looks at St. Peter, looks at God and says, you're in my seat. That's, that's cats, right? <laughs> huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's cats. So, uh, yeah, the, so basically... The cat was trying to assume judgment and, and being able to, to take over take over for God, right? And do judging there. Okay, so I, I like the story. That's funny. All right. Anyway, so we, we talked about last week and how uh, we are not supposed to judge people outside of the church. Let me find my uh, notes here. And uh, did anybody go ahead and try to apply that to their lives this week? Okay, well, that's fine. All right. So we determined that Christians are only to judge those inside of the camp of Christianity, right? As a matter of fact, not only are we not to judge people outside of the church, but we're not really supposed to judge people inside of Christianity unless we're prepared to be judged as we judge others, right? Let's, let's go back to Matthew 7, 1 through 5. And remember, I said, BYOB, bring your own Bible. So if you've got a Bible, get it out. Uh, if not, because I don't have the scripture, you know, we don't have the, the PowerPoint for you to see here. But Matthew 7, 1 to 5, let me reread this. We did this last week. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? And King James says the plank. I like plank, but this the New American Standard Bible says log. Or and it says, or how do you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your own eye, when behold, the log that is in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and you will, then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And again, we're going to jump to Galatians now, 6, 1 through 5. Brethren, if anyone is caught in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself, so that you will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, and not in regard to another. For each one will bear his own load. So these two verses tell us that even people that are inside of Christianity, we don't judge them unless... 
we are spiritually mature ourselves and prepared to take that same judgment upon ourselves, right? Uh, someone else judging us. And again, that judgment can come from people outside of Christianity. We've heard people say to Christians like, oh, how can you be so judgmental, you know? Anybody ever heard somebody outside of Christianity say that? Yeah, they go, you know, you know Christians are great until you start judging others. Well, we're told not to judge others, uh, but we can judge those inside the church. If we see a brother or sister in sin, uh, I think it is right and scriptural to go to that person and take them aside. You know, you don't call them out publicly unless, unless of course, they're a, a, a leader. Paul does this. He calls out people publicly in his letters. He says, you know, this person's leading you astray. This person's leading you astray. Don't listen to them. But if it's someone who's not a leader, we don't call them out publicly. And I've seen pastors do that even on YouTube. It's really sad that they, they call people out publicly. But we, we take them aside and say, you know, brother, sister, this is where you're erring. This is what I see. And we do it also in a spirit of humility, knowing that, but for the grace of God, go I, right? Make sense? All right. So, but really, those people outside of the church, we're called not to judge them, but do we really not judge them? I mean, think about this. My daughter just got married, a, was it a week ago or two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. And uh, the man that she met, they met at college. They were going out for a while. And why did she decide to go out with him? Well, I guess she judged that it would be okay to go out with him, right? Okay, and, and then he asked to marry her. He, he called Denise and I aside and asked that, you know, that if he could marry our daughter and... Uh, and we judged him to be a good guy, uh, a godly man, and we gave him our blessing. So we really do judge people, but I, I think it's more of a discernment thing. When, when we talk about judging, and what does a judge do in, in real life, an actual judge in the court, right? They hear a case, and then they judge. They pass sentence, right? So judges actually pass sentences. I don't think as Christians we pass sentences, sentences on others, but we do have to use discernment, right? Uh, the Bible tells us very clearly, look at Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. Do not associate with a man given to anger or go with a hot tempered man or you will learn his ways and find a snare for yourself. Kind of tells us right there that regardless of whether they're brothers or sisters in Christ, if someone has a bad temper, we should probably avoid that person. Are we judging them by doing that? I, I think so. We're not, we're not, we're, you know, we're not basically saying, you know, you're, you're condemned because you're, you're angry, but, you know, we got to guard our own spirits too, don't we? Right? And so we can go to that person maybe and, and try to show them their other ways, show them their sin, uh, let them realize, come to the blood of Christ, maybe. But if, if they reject that, I don't think we should spend any more time with them. Jesus says, you know, don't cast your pearls before swine, right? And he's not talking about literal pigs. He's talking about, you know, you don't waste spiritual gifts that you have on people that have no desire to want to learn it, right? How many people have ever been in an argument with somebody and they just want to argue? They don't want to listen to your side at all, even though you're listening to their side. Of course, they'll say that you're not listening to my side, right? But you do listen to their side. But, uh, but they just want to argue. And, you know, Jesus is basically saying, you know, once or twice, share the gospel with them. And then, you know, wipe, wipe your hands, wipe your feet, you know, dust the, you know, the dust off of their off of your shoes and, and walk away. That's what he told the apostles, or the disciples when he blessed them and sent them on their on their trip in Luke. Right. Remember that? He's, and if someone doesn't listen to you and doesn't want to, he says, you know, wipe, you know, dust the wipe the dust off your shoes and walk away from them, right? So I, I think judgment is kind of a, a different word that they're using here. But, you know, in English, we use the word judgment over and over. So I'm going to go with more of a discernment. Now, there's a great author uh, by the name of Peter Kreeft. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of him. He's a, he's a Christian philosopher, and uh, he's on a website called The Imaginative Conservative. And... Uh, I'm going to put a, post a link to the article when we put this online there. But he talks about the 19 different types of judgment. 19. Did you know there were 19 different types? He says, well, there might be 20, but uh, he says if he uses 19, then he, he gets as many types of judgment as uh, Frodo, uh, no, Bilbo. Is it Frodo or Bilbo from uh, Lord of the Rings? One of them has nine fingers and 
10 toes, so this 19. But anyway, uh, he says uh, he's got 19 different types of judgment, and most of them are God's judgment. There's also the angel's judgment, and then there's mankind judgment. What, what, what do we mean by God's judgment? And I'm just going to go into a couple of them here. I'll let you look it up. I'll put the, art, I'll put the link online. It's, it's a really interesting article. But he talks about God is the ultimate judge. Matter of fact, when God created everything, how did he judge it? Do you remember every day after creation, what did he say? It is what? It is good. It is good. Is that a judgment? Oh, absolutely, right? It is good. Except when he created man, he said, it is not good that he should be alone, right? And so then he, <laughs> he, created, he created a helpmate for him, right? The, the female, uh, Eve, right? But he does, he does say, it is good. Even looking into the future, which God can do because he's God, right? He doesn't exist within time. He exists outside of time so he can see time. Even, even looking into the future, knowing that man was going to turn away from him and sin, God still said, it is good, and he judged us to be worthy of redemption. Oh, come on, doesn't that excite you? Yeah, me too. I mean, come on, why would God judge me to be worthy of redemption? I mean, you know, I was a jerk before I was a Christian. I'm still probably a jerk, but, you know, not, I've gotten a little better, but I'm, you know, compared to God, I'm a big jerk, right? Anybody else a big jerk compared to God? Yeah, okay. Okay. But God still loves you and still judged you to be worthy of redemption. And that's why he sent Jesus. So those are some of the judgments that Peter Kreeft is talking about. But then he talks about the judging that we have amongst others, right? And, uh, and we need to remember that even though we don't, when we, when we judge others, and I say judge in quotes, we're not condemning that person like God. We're not a, assuming the throne of judgment like God does, but we are trying to guard our hearts, right? I, I think we need to do that. There are people out there that, you know, if, if you fall in with them, you might go back to the ways that you had before. For instance, if you're an alcoholic and you decide you want to stop drinking and, and you do stop drinking, Probably the only alcoholics you should be hanging out with are the ones you meet in the 12-step program, right? Once a week or your sponsor or whatever. You're not going to go back into a bar and hang out with people in the bar because what are they doing? They're drinking, right? So you got to guard your heart. Are you judging those people? You know, I, you're not judging them to be worthy or unworthy of God, but you're judging them that you're not going to spend time with them because they're going to pull you back to the way you were, right? Right? Uh, Look at Proverbs 12, 26. The righteous is a guide to his neighbor. How do you know someone's righteous? Well, you, you, you judge them, right? I mean, you, you, uh, whether they're leading the right path or not, you, you have to know within your heart whether you think they're going the right way or not, right? But the way of the wicked leads them astray. So should we hang around people that are wicked? Probably not. Did Jesus hang around wicked people? He he associated with them, right? But he, he didn't spend, you know, his free time with them, if you will, right? Uh, Jesus, you know, you, I'm, you, you know, if you don't want to find sinners, don't go out of your house, basically, right? <laughs> They're everywhere, <laughs> right? You want to see a sinner? Look in the mirror. But, uh, but basically, you know, we, we don't spend all of our time with them, right? We, we, we spend as much time as we can and I have friends that are atheists, friends that are leading a, a, a you know a life that I don't lead anymore. Uh, they're they're associates of mine, I guess. Now they're not really quote unquote best friends or anything. They used to be good friends. Now they're kind of acquaintances. I've shared Christ with them, and and if they want to accept it, that's fine. But I, you know, as a as a Christian, you know, I think we have to cut ourselves off from some of those things that might take us back to go where we didn't want to, where we were that we don't want to be at, right? And is that judgment? Yeah. But it's, again, we're not judging them as far as, you know, you're condemned to die and God hates you, that, that kind of judgment. You know, when, when you see people out there with those signs that say, you know, God hates gay people, and I've, I've seen those signs, that doesn't do Christianity any good at all, does it? And, and God does not hate gay people. God hates their sin, he hates everybody's sin, you know, whatever your sin is, he hates it, but he loves you and he judges you worthy of redemption. He judges everybody worthy of redemption. 
that's the only reason Jesus came, because he looked at us, me in the future, saw saw the sin that I was going to create commit and sent Jesus. Wow. That just blows my mind sometimes, right? Proverbs 12, 26. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Are you judging them? Again, how do you use the word judgment? Yeah, you, they're enticing you. Don't do it. Get away from them. Titus 3, 9 through 11, just in case you think it's an Old Testament thing. Paul talks about it here to Titus. He says, but avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and strife and disputes about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Reject a factious man after a first and second warning. So you say, no, you know, you talk to them first, but if they're still going to stir up strife and dissension, do away with them, right? As far as your life goes, right? Don't, don't spend a lot of time with them. Knowing that such a man is perverted and is sinning, being self-condemned. Psalm 1. I love Psalm 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Again, how do you not walk in the counsel of the wicked? Well, you judge them whether they're wicked or not, right? Uh, and, and you don't say, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He will, be like, he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Again, uh, follow those that you know are going the right way, right? If you, know, if you, call, if you see someone that's erring, I, I would say, if, first of all, they're in the camp of Christianity. As Christians, we, we try to show them the error of their ways in a hum, humility, in a, in a, you know, a spirit of humility. And of course, before we do that, we pray about it, right? Yeah, the Holy Spirit is the guide, right? But if there's someone outside of Christianity that's a good friend of yours, and, you know, a good example is, you know, uh, well, use the alcoholic example, but what if you've got a group of friends that, you know, want to, oh, I say, knock over a bank? Should you stay with them? Probably not, right? Definitely not. I think we can judge that, that, that is not something we want to be involved in, right? And if you know they're going to do it, I would say that, you know, go tell somebody about it. Yeah, be a rat, I guess, okay? Uh, but the, the point is, is, you know, we want to make sure that the people that we're judging outside of Christianity, and again, I'm using that word judgment with the quotes here, as, as more of a discernment type thing, that we are not putting ourselves in God's position and judging them, you know, for all eternity, like, like God will someday. But we're guarding our hearts, right? We're guarding our spirits because that's all we have. We are, we are spirit. We don't have a spirit. We are spirit. We have a body, right? We use that body for good, for evil. But the spirit, we need to guard. And I believe Christ is calling us to do that. Paul tells us right there, you, you know, in Titus there, that, you know, if there's people that are doing the wrong thing, after talking to them and maybe trying to get them over on the right side, you know, again, we probably avoid them. Guard your heart. If you want to be somewhere in five years, who do you hang around with? People that are where you want to be in five years, right? You, you look at the, the kind of life that they're leading, and hopefully those are the people you hang around with, and then their habits and their attitude will, will rub off on you. How many of you have ever been around some really negative people that are just, you know, like Debbie Downer? Anybody know Debbie Downer is from Saturday Night Live, you know? Okay, the Debbie Downers of the world. If you want to be a Debbie Downer and, and be around those kind of people, hang, hang around them. But if you want to be progressing in the cause of Christ, hang around those people that are progressing in the cause of Christ. And, and I know that you will be drawn closer to Christ as a result of that. All right. God created us to be social people. Right? He looked at he looked at Adam and said, "It is not good that he is alone." And he created Eve. 
Adam and Eve, and then they had kids. And, uh, you know, we are so, this, that's what's really hard about this COVID-19, right? We all want to gather and, and hug. And yeah, I'll say hug, even though I don't really, I'm getting better at hugging. But once I finally am comfortable with hugging people, they tell me I can't do it anymore, right? <laughs> anyway, so I, I think the message again this morning is, we, again, we, we, we judge those inside of the church that need our help and, and we see that they're erring. We restore them, as Paul says. And those outside of the church, we don't judge them as the seed of God, but we, we judge them as whether it's worthy of spending our time or not. By the way, we judge all the time, don't we? I mean, you know, there's two programs on at the same time. And before, you know, who, who remembers before cable and before DVRs? Okay. There were two programs on, right? And you had to choose between one or the other to watch or turn it off and not watch either, right? But, but you, would, you would judge, basically, you know, which, which is worthy of my time, right? Uh, in the listening to a radio in the car, you know, you judge which, which station is worthy of your time to listen to. And so I, I think we're constantly judging, and, and we do that all through our life. And again, Peter Kreef in that article talks about those 19 different types of judgment, and it's an amazing article. I will, I will put the link online so you guys can check that out. It, it's very good. But as we judge others, let's remember that we're being judged too, right? We're being judged by God if we don't know Christ. But when we know Christ, he has taken all the judgment for us. Amen? He went to the cross for us. He, he did it all. He, Jesus paid it all. I love the, the song that we sing with the one by Fanny Crosby. I know who's, I know in who the beauty of whose light I will, how's that go? The, the fourth verse? Redeemed, right? The last part is, I don't have it up here. What's that? What is it, Dan? Oh, she's going to hand it to me. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> let, me, let me do this here. I, I just love this verse here because uh, in Redeem, I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose way I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and given me songs in the night. He guards the footsteps, right? And Fanny Crosby, if you remember, she was blind, right? Since she was, I think, four years old. And they asked her, you know, one time, or I think it was the Fanny Crosby, it was Helen Keller, right? They asked Helen Keller if she ever wanted to get her sight back, uh, while she was on earth, she says, no, because the first person I wanted to see was Jesus, right? She was born again Christian. She knew the Lord. Fanny Crosby, who was blind, most of her songs have something about seeing Jesus. So when you think about, you know, that she wrote this song, I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose way I delight. Well, what is that way? The way is, uh, is the way of Christ, right? Knowing that Christ came, he fulfilled the law, he went to the cross for her, for us, for me, for you, for everybody. And as a result of that, we don't have to stand in judgment. Take Jesus as your judge or take him as your savior. I like the savior option. Anybody else? Amen? The savior option is the way to go, right? So let's remember that as, as we go th forward this week, ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, again, Christ is the ultimate judge. We don't judge those outside of the church, but we, we choose whether we want to spend time with them or not. And I, I don't think it's wrong. It's not right or wrong how, how we do that. The important thing is we don't sin, right? Christ is the ultimate judge, but he's also our Savior. And I'm taking him as, our, as, I'm taking him as my Savior. So as, as we leave today, let's, uh, let's close in prayer this morning. And... Uh, as we close in prayer, afterwards we'll sing uh, Jesus is a Wonderful Savior. If you guys remember that, do you have that? Do you know that song? Okay, we'll sing it a cappella. We'll, we'll do that a cappella afterwards. All right, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for your goodness, your graciousness, and your gospel, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, Lord, that you judged creation and saw that it was good. And Lord, we're part of that creation, so we thank you that we have been judged good. We thank you, Lord, for your graciousness. You know that even though we've sinned, Lord, that you sent Jesus to die for us and you judged us worthy of that redemption. And that is the gospel, Lord. We thank you for the goodness of the gospel that we have been judged worthy of redemption, but we also get to partake in you sharing the gospel with others, Lord. You, for some reason, 
you have given us this joy, this responsibility to let others know about Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray this morning that as we leave here, Holy Spirit would be upon us and those that we come in contact with. At first, we would emulate Christ to them in our life. And second, that we would be bold and share the gospel with them and so that they can then be brought into the camp of Christianity and know the goodness that you have, Lord, and know that even though they've sinned, you still judge them good because you sent Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you again. We ask, Lord, that again as we leave this week, uh, that we would be drawn closer to you, bring others into your camp. Help us, Lord, to remember to always be a good ambassador for you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's close this morning with Jesus is a wonderful Savior. We could stand. Usually we get together and we hold.